Good morning, folks. We'll begin today with the return of earthquakes to America Central, where the Caribbean Plate meets the Cocos Plate, and the subduction zone just north and south of it is a top spring watch zone as the tropical heat comes back north of the equator. Other subsurface note is another buoy deviation at that same Bay of Bengal location. Last time, three days of readings here led to that insane foreshock activity in the Arabian Sea that never amounted to a bigger quake. We're going to do this a little differently today. You're going to watch the functionality of the earth wind map so you see how to use it and get the scale. We're going to start with the wind layer near the surface. The height numbers are misleading because the higher up you go, the lower the number. When you get up to 250, that's the jet stream. Here it helps to know the wind speed scale. The scale will always be in this location regardless of your overlay. You can see it change as I pull up the temperature overlay. Now when an overlay and layer is set, you can drag and turn the globe to see another location without losing your inputs. Temperature readings are like the wind readings. You can go high up into the atmosphere and see the air temperatures way above our heads. Before we show more of the air, click the ocean overlay to see the currents. I use this to monitor the weakening Gulf Stream. Okay, we'll take a brief look at the new humidity overlay. This is actually pretty intuitive at the surface level, even without the scale. But as you move up through the atmosphere, the scale really helps to understand where the moisture is in the atmosphere. Virtually none up at our top layers, but just below them in the lower stratosphere, we do begin to see large vapor cells, and these appear to be a global equatorial phenomenon. The air density readings will only be helpful if an anomaly is to be seen. In order to really see anything on a normal day, you gotta put the air density on the lowest level you can, close to the ground, and hit North America. Now the wind power overlay is actually very similar to the regular wind map. It scales with speed and as you change atmospheric elevation. The second line is all our older overlays down below precipitable water which we use to tell which lows are most damaging. The only overlay that is actually better on a real satellite image is the cloud overlay. It's a bit skippy here. The sea level pressure is one of the most helpful. Use that scale and it's much easier than those uncolored line pressure charts you get on some websites. And If you're an experienced observer you only need the pressure to know the weather. That bottom line down below is how you switch back and forth between earth views. I tend to prefer the O sphere and the flattened earth E, but others are definitely worth checking out. Top weather story today is indeed in the United States. A major winter storm about to roll through again, potentially finish off the Great Lakes ice records from the mid 90s. It's amazing how often prolonged gamma burst droughts are punctuated by double or triple events. It's been two weeks and we got two within 18 hours over the last day. Solar wind remains ultimately calm. We have no geomagnetic disruption at Earth and the sensitive meters are even regaining a nice curve. Proton flux continues downward as well as the flaring has remained muted. But evening news watchers heard me call out a specific sunspot development feature that could change things. Last night we remarked that the beast was becoming magnetically separated, while that name perhaps should shift south where the central development of a traditional lateral spreader was rearing his head, ready to mix magnetically. Back before the solar flares started becoming rarer than an honest attorney, the best chances for flaring often occurred in the center of two well-developed umbras. Watch right in the center between the active region edges. That's major middle development of sunspot umbras and something to watch. Let's hop to interplanetary magnetics to find, curiously, that all four inner planets are sharing a magnetic connection to our star at the moment. A bit of new territory there and worthy of mention if not monitoring. Let's take a look at the solar magnetic fields. We'll start with the interplanetary powers. The current corona holes are weak but that southern incomer is as strong as they get. You can see the powerful red negative openings behind the current coronal fields heading in. Looking down from above, we see maybe another one or two days before it becomes potentially geo-effective. It is the only coronal field opening on the disk not blocked by the orange umbral fields from sunspots. Since you saw the wind map already, let's hit some extra shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.